ಶೋಭಾಪರಂ ಮನ ಮನಸ್ತು ಪರ ಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ ಯಾ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪರತಾಸ್ತು translation the working sense or superior to dull matter mind is higher than the senses intelligence is higher is still higher than the mind and he the soul is even higher than the intelligence perfect the senses are different outlet for the activities of lust lust is reserved within the body but it is given when through the senses therefore the senses are superior to the body as a whole these outlets are not in use when there is superior consciousness or krishna consciousness in krishna consciousness the soul makes direct connection with the supreme personality of godhead therefore the hierarchy of bodily function as described here ultimately ends in the supreme soul bodily action means the functions of the senses and stopping the sense senses means stopping all bodily actions but since the mind is active then even though the body may be silent at rest the mind will act as it does during dreaming but above the mind is the determination of the intelligence and above the intelligence is the soul proper if therefore the soul is directly engaged with the supreme naturally all subordinates namely the intelligence mind and the senses will be automatically engaged mm-hmm. in the in the kanta upanyas upanishad there is a similar passage in which it is said it is the object of sense gratification or superior to the senses and the mind is superior to the sense object if therefore the mind is directly engaged in the service of the lord constantly then there is no chance that the senses will become engaged in other ways this mental attitude has already been explained pranam distva nivetite if the mind is engaged in the transcendental service of the lord there is no chance of its being engaged in the lower from pensentis in the katha upanishad the soul has been described as mahan the great therefore the soul is above all namely the sense objects the sense the mind and the intelligence therefore directly understanding the constitutional position of the soul is the solution of the whole problem with intelligence one has to seek of the constitutional position of the soul and then engage the mind always in krishna consciousness that solves the whole problem and neopath spiritualized is generally advised to keep aloof from the objects of the senses but aside from that one has to strengthen the mind by use of intelligence if by intelligence one engages one's mind in krishna consciousness by complete surrender into the supreme personality of godhead then automatically the mind becomes stronger and even though the senses are very strong like sapets there will be no more effective than sapets with broken fats but even though the soul is the master of intelligence and mind and the senses also still unless it is strengthened by association with krishna in krishna consciousness there is every chance of falling down due to the agitated mind hari krishna hari krishna so this verse describes the something of the hierarchy which is there within our body right it said the, the senses are superior to the body but superior to the senses is the mind the mind the function of the mind is desire so the desires are there in the mind and the desires direct the senses to do different things by the power of the mind the hand will pick up something the the mind will give the direction to the hand the mind gives direction to the legs it's all coming from the mind the, the different movements of the senses are originating from the mind and higher than the mind is the intelligence intelligence will tell us what we should be doing what we shouldn't do it the intelligence tells us don't eat that 
The intelligence tells us, oh, don't go there, don't do that. But sometimes we don't listen to the intelligence. <laughs> anyway, intelligence is there trying to direct us. And Krishna also says how he's in the heart of everyone and from him comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So that's how the, the super soul works. Anyway, the intelligence is a function of the subtle body, right? We have a gross physical body. Then we have the subtle body. Subtle body means the mind, the intelligence and the ego. And above that, we have the soul, the spiritual body. So the soul is seated next to the intelligence. And the soul has to be strengthened with Krishna consciousness. So the, the soul is strengthened by Krishna consciousness. If the soul is not in Krishna consciousness, then we don't get proper direction. There's no good intelligence there. And the mind is attracted to sense gratification. But so this is a problem that the living entity is marginal, that we can either be, we can either be in the material energy or in the spiritual energy. We have that freedom. We have that choice. It's up to us which way we want to be, which side we want to be in. Just like you're in Switzerland, but you can also go to France. You cannot stay in the border. You have to go either in, into France or in Switzerland. There's a border. You cannot just always remain on the border. And so the same way we are living entities, we are marginal potency. We, we're either in the material energy or in the spiritual energy. It's our choice. We have to get good intelligence. That good intelligence comes from the soul. If the soul is properly directed by hearing Bhagavad Gita and by chanting the holy name, if we get proper inst instruction from the, from the teachers, then we know what we should be doing. So we have to make proper use of our independence, of our free will. We have to know what is actually our position. Prabhupada talks about the constitutional position of the soul. Constitutional position of the soul is to be the servant of the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Soul, Lord Krishna, the Super Soul. And we are his servant. We are his part. We are tiny parts. So our constitutional position is to be engaged in his service. If we don't serve him, then we serve Maya. Either way, we have to serve. Either we serve Krishna or we serve Maya. It's our choice. When you serve Maya, then you get a hard time. You get a lot of problems, a lot of trouble. But when you serve Krishna, you get a lot of bliss. You get a lot of nectar. Is it clear? Any questions? Guru Maharaj, if we serve the live, uh, our family members, friends in attitude that uh, they are uh, part of Krishna, then we can improve? Can we improve that way? Is it like we should have a good training of serving in the material world to other people, then we can also serve Krishna easily in the spiritual world? Well, we have to be cautious that if we just think about Krishna only within our family members, then it's a very limited conception. You have to see Krishna within everyone, within every living entity, not just only within your own family members. That's love of your family. That's not love of Krishna. So your love of Krishna is very limited to just your family members. 
You have to expand on that. You have, we have to be able to see Krishna everywhere, in everyone, in everything. Krishna is in the hearts of all living entities, not just in the heart of our family members. So we have to be very careful about that. People are very clever and making these kind of interpretations, making this kind of statement. Oh, I'm serving Krishna. Krishna's in my family. You don't do anything for Krishna. You just, it's all based on the body. So we have to overcome this bodily conception of life. And the bodily conception of life is we identify, we're thinking I am the body and we're thinking these are my family members. This is my wife, these are my children, this is my parents, my in-laws, my relatives. It's all bodily conception. So this is like the animals. The animals have, a same, have the same affection for their family members. We have to expand the consciousness. We have to see Krishna in everyone, in everything. All right? Don't just see Krishna only in the deity. Some people think Krishna is only in the temple. They don't see him in the heart of all, all the people. So this is all, this is another kind of a, another kind of skin disease. We're identifying with the body and the things in relation to the body. My family, my relatives, all the bodily expand, the bodily relationships. So it causes a lot of trouble. Of course, Krishna is in your family, but he's not only in your family. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. In after a uh, few years, maybe I take birth in different family. <laughs> <laughs> we've had so, many families. In the past, we've had many families. We're taking time many times in different families. We've had many mothers and fathers. We've had many children. Of course, we have to take care of the family here, but we have to know also how to take care of the family. It's not just only eating and sleeping and mating and defending. And taking care of them, you have to think about their, their spiritual welfare. And we have to awaken them to a higher consciousness. So it's important for them to also hear spiritual knowledge like Bhagavad Gita and to understand about the soul and the difference between the body and the soul. Guru Maharaj, I'm a question. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm right. Uh, reading, uh, please. I'm, uh, I'm right for you. Okay. You put on the chat? In the chat, yes. Okay. So, there's a question on the chat here. <clears throat> When you have sex, children are born.
Krishna had sex and Rama and Shiva, Mahadev, and therefore, if Krishna wants, maybe we have to have children at the right time. And when it is time to improve spiritual qualities, we have to stop having sex. Is that right or not? In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna does not condemn sex. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Dharma Barude Bhuteshu Kamosmi Bharatarsabha. Chapter 10, Lord Krishna said, I am that sex which is not against religious principles. So Krishna himself becomes the act of sex when it's done in the proper way, which is according to religious principles. And the religious principles means it's done with the intention of conceiving a child. So you have to understand uh, yes. the proper use of sex. First of all, one should be married and situated in married life. And then one should desire to pro pro produce children, to have a child. So that is religious. It's, it's, and that is a very uh, sanctified activity. It depends, of course, on the consciousness. The proper consciousness has to be there. And then there's no harm. It's very good. You understand? I understand. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead. Fernando Prabhu, can you please read uh, 3.43? Sure, Mataji, sure. Thank you, Prabhu. Evam budhe param budhva tam sadhyat manam atmanaha jai satrum bahu bahu Translation. Thus, knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses, mind and intelligence, all might armed Arjuna, one should stead the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence, Krishna consciousness, and thus, by spiritual strength, conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust, purport. This third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is conclusively dire directive to Krishna consciousness, consciousness by knowing oneself as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Without considering impersonal voidness, the ultimate end. In the material existence of life, one is certainly influenced by propensities for lust and desire for dominating the resource of material nature. Desire for overlording and for sense gratification is the greatest enemy of the conditioned soul. But by the strength of Krishna consciousness, one can control the material sense, the mind and the intelligence. One may not give up work and prescribe duties all of a sudden, but by gradually developing Krishna consciousness, one can be situated in a transcendental position without being influenced by the material senses and the mind. By steady intelligence direct toward one's pure identity. This is the sum total of this chapter. In the immature stage of material existence, philosophical speculations, and artificial attempts to control the senses by the so-called practice of yogic posture can never help a man toward spiritual life. He must be trained in Krishna consciousness by higher intelligence. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the third chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of Kama Yoga or the discharge of one's prescribed duty in Krishna consciousness. 
So now Lord Krishna is concluding his answer to Arjuna about this very important question. Right? Who remembers what was Arjuna's question? Anyone remember? Arjuna asked the question several verses ago. He wanted to know. Anyone can remember? Why people commit sins? Hare Krishna. Yeah, who, yeah, who's answering? Kirtida Devadasi, Hare Krishna Maharaj, my business is all goes to Shukupad. Hare Krishna. Yeah, what is your answer again? Why do people commit sins? What power? Why do people commit sins? On people. Yes, and, he, and and Arjuna added a little more. He said, even unwilling, as if engaged by force, right? So that was Arjuna's question. And what was Krishna's answer? Do you remember? But for the last, the last makes people commit. Why do, why do people commit sins? What's the answer? The last, the last? Last, yes, last. Very good. And where is the last? Where is it found? Mind and senses sort of or the place sitting place of lust. You're missing one thing. Intelligence. Yes. In the senses, the mind, and the intelligence are seated places of this lust, right? And what is the nature of lust? Can you describe it? Tell me something about the nature of this lust. A lust will not get satisfied, Maharaj. Uh, it is like itching. Never satisfied, right? Never satisfied. Something else? It is like teaching. Uh, as, as we go on to the lust, it will again grow. The lust will never get uh, fulfilled. I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand your voice. Could you speak a bit clearer? It is like itching, the Guru Maharaj. Like, uh, as we itch, it, the itching sense develops, uh, it grows, it never uh, fulfills. Uh, uh, itching sensation. So it is uh -huh. less just like that. Okay, it's like some irritation in the skin. The scratching doesn't help it anything. Yes, that's in the purport. What about Lord Krishna's words? What does how does Lord Krishna describe it? He says it burns like. Burns like, forest, like burns, fire, right? burns like fire, right? Burns like a fire. Yes, what Prabhu? Burns like a fire, never satisfied. And it's the all devouring sinful enemy. <laughs> it's a sinful enemy. So now, how do we conquer over it? By practicing Krishna conscious uh, and having a habit of sadhana. Okay, yes. What did Krishna say, actually? Regulating the senses. Regulating the senses, yes. And cultivating spiritual intelligence and by then by spiritual strength spiritual strength we can conquer the enemy lust how do we know if we have spiritual strength how will we know give an example
if we are able to do regularly chanting okay you wake up every day every morning you do chanting yes good another example being regular in devotional service yes so give an example um, sharing prasad talking about krishna consciousness around yeah. us with people yes there there may be a party in your office and they have a lot of drinks and a lot of unhealthy impure food and they're all eating and they're telling you take something have something to drink have something to eat but you you're not you're not inclined but why not because you're a devotee because you have because you have spiritual strength the example was given the senses are like poison snakes right poison snakes but uh, what about for a devotee what happens to the set senses they become like what you take out the poison from the snakes then it yeah. becomes uh... yeah you take out the poison thing from the snake so the snake is harmless mm. or you have a pipe you have the man play the pipe and the snake charmer is there and he's playing his pipe and he's controlling the snakes by playing his pipe he has some control by his pipe playing yes so this way we keep the senses always controlled this is higher intelligence we have to be trained in krishna consciousness in higher intelligence there's lower intelligence and higher intelligence what's lower intelligence it means activities that are attached to the material world maybe yeah give an example mm. eating sleeping yes right yeah. eat, eating any eat anything and everything <laughs> <laughs> hmm. these things yeah people they don't have higher intelligence their intelligence is on the level of the animal eating watching tv yeah <laughs> yes wasting their time watching television mundane things nothing to do with krishna nothing to do with self realization so lower intelligence is just animal life and higher intelligence is to understand more about our soul and our eternal position as a spiritual being in relation to krishna all right any questions everyone's got this clear now yes the maharaj very clear the third chapter of bhagavad gita is completed today wonderful hari bol thank you guru maharaj thanks to you no 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 i'm not doing anything all right is every anybody have any questions or any doubts one question guru maharaj if the soul is uh, highest why we didn't listen it why uh, it uh, does not command us what to do why we listen only mind <laughs> yeah why do you listen only the mind we listen while we were explaining there's two kinds of intelligence there's higher intelligence and lower intelligence 
why are we listening to the lower intelligence and not to the higher intelligence? Because we're very attached to sense gratification. Now, sense gratification is not wrong, but sense gratification should be done in relationship to Krishna. We have to learn how to control the senses and to use them in the service of Krishna. We shouldn't just be a servant or a slave of our own senses and mind. So Krishna gives us that freedom. He gives us that, that free will to choose. Do we want to listen to the soul? And the soul even can become affected. The soul can become covered. If we're not in Krishna consciousness, the soul can become covered by the material energy and we fall into the material illusion. So we have to practice carefully controlling the mind and senses and cultivating the higher intelligence. We have to hear regularly from the Bhagavad Gita. We have to understand this knowledge and then we get the intelligence to fight, to fight against the enemy. What is the enemy? Who is the enemy? Yuna? Who is the enemy? Uh, Krodha. Uh, Krodha. Yes. Kama, Krodha. Yes, lust is the enemy, right? Lust, yes. Yes, the ins un insatiable enemy known as lust. Right? Lust is, you know, just serving the the senses trying to satisfy our lust, our material desire, it doesn't bring any happiness, doesn't bring any pleasure. It's the, but it, there's the illusion of pleasure, the illusion of happiness. And if we don't have the proper intelligence, if we have not been properly educated, we cannot understand, we cannot appreciate this. So it's so important that people have to be educated in the spiritual knowledge, how to control their senses and their mind, and how to come to the higher consciousness. The mind can be the friend, the mind can be the enemy. It's how we use it. The mind can elevate us, the mind can degrade us. So for spiritual enlightenment, we also use the mind. Maharaj Ambarish, the great devotee, the very first thing he did was to fix his mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So fix the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna and then use the senses in the service of Krishna. So this is the principle of Krishna consciousness. We have to get the mind under control. It takes some practice. In the, we will see in chapter 6, Arjuna said, oh, I cannot control my mind. But Krishna says, well, I know it's difficult, but it's possible. Right? Have you read chapter 6, Yuna? Yes, I know chapter 6. So, Lord Krishna said, I know it's difficult to control the mind, but it's possible. And he told two things which were required. Do you remember? Yes, we need practice. That's right. We need to practice. We need to practice. Yes. And one other thing? Practice and control. Detachment. Detachment. Yes, detachment. yes. The problem is we're very attached. We're very attached. I want, I want, I need this, I have to have this. 
This is the problem, the illusion. So we have to train ourselves to control the senses and the mind. It's not easy. It takes practice. Remember, we've been in the material world a long time. We've had many bodies. We don't remember. Somehow, by some good fortune, we've come in contact with the spiritual knowledge. So it's a great awakening for us. It helps us to understand the truth about life and to see some purpose. Otherwise, we didn't know what life was about. We had no, we had no knowledge what life was for. And we were drifting aimlessly and suffering and trying to enjoy, trying to satisfy our senses, trying to serve our lust and becoming greedy and angry all the time. We were never happy. But then somehow, by some good fortune, we meet the devotees and we get some Krishna consciousness. So it's a big change in our life. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Guru Maharaj. Uh, yes. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Next Go week, Ramanaomi, right, Guru Maharaj? Ramanaomi is on Wednesday. Yeah. Do we celebrate a fast? How, how should we do Ramanavami, Guru Maharaj? Yes, we fast usually. Fasting. Some people fast half day and some people will fast the full day till evening. It's up to you. I think most temples, they only fast a half a day. But some people do fast up until the evening and they will take a Karasi Prasadam on, because it's the appearance day of Lord Rama and Lord Rama is Vishnu Tattva. He's a form of Lord Vishnu. And so it's recommended we shouldn't eat grains on the appearance day of Lord Vishnu. Oh, okay, Guru Maharaj, because uh, I remember we in India, we always celebrated eating a lot of grains on the appearances day. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true, you know, most temples, they also serve grains because it's not so easy for them to organize a courtesy prasadam for everyone. That's a problem. It's really a term because of management difficulties. If you have many people coming to the temple and they're all taking prasada, it's difficult to prepare a lot of ekadasi prasada. But if they're using grains, it's not so difficult. So it's customary that in our Krishna consciousness movement, at least, we have only three festivals where we don't eat grains. And that is... Uh, uh, one is Gorpunima, and one is Janmastami, and the other one is Nishinga Chaturasi. So those three festivals, they, they, they observe, uh, no, like, they will take only a courtesy prasadam on those days. Gorpunima is fasting, of course, till moonrise in the evening. Nishinga Chaturasi is fasting until sunset, and uh, Janmastami is fasting until midnight. But on all, on both those, all those three occasions, then we will take only a courtesy prasadam. However, there are many people on the appearance day of Vishnu Tattva, and Lord Rama is also Vishnu Tattva, and they will not take grains. So if you like to do that, you can, it's very nice. But it's not compulsory. Okay, okay Guru Maharaj. 
Is, is it like uh, in on ega desi the papa the sin is residing in the grains but is there a concept for this appearance day also why we, we are not taking grains guru maharaj well i just explained that because he's vishnu tatva because he's lord vishnu so in honor of the appearance day of lord vishnu that it said but we should observe fasting from fasting. grains yeah yes guru maharaj yeah now it's more clear guru maharaj um lord rama I, now i'm not sure what time he actually appears at does he appear at noon or does he appear in the evening i think probably he appears in the midday i'm not sure but you know just like lord chaitanya his appearance was at the you know in the evening and lord nishingadev's appearance was in the evening and uh, and then lord krishna he appears at midnight so we would observe fasting until after his appearance so for lord drama i think uh, i'm not sure when he appears but anyway prabhupad gave some instruction there were some different instructions you know some one time it said you could fast until the whole until the evening another time it said you can take prasadam at midday <laughs> so there were some different instructions so the devotees you know they, they some devotees they will have fasting until the evening and some devotees will just fast until noon yeah good much fasting until noon is more easier right good much yes yeah Mm. All right. So will we go on to the fourth chapter or or will we chant around now or what? Uh as you wish Guru Maharaj. Uh, maybe we should uh, yeah anything is fine for me for us. It's 12 uh, uh yeah Guru Maharaj it's 12:15 yeah 12:15 yeah do we have time to do another verse yes guru maharaj maybe we can start the fourth chapter okay go ahead sorry fourth chapter transcendental knowledge tanmay prabhu can you please uh, read 4.1 sure mata ji thank you prabhu shri bhagavan uvacha imam vivasvate yogyam proktavan aham avyayam vivasvan manave praha manur ikshava ikshva Translation, the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, Vivashvan, and Vivashvan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu in turn instructed it to Ikshuvaku. Parpart. Herein we find the history of Bhagavad Gita traced from a remote time when it was delivered to the royal order of all planets beginning from the sun planet the kings of all planets are especially meant for the protection of the inhabitants and therefore the royal order should understand the science of Bhagavad Gita in order to be able to rule the citizens and protect them from material bondage to lust human life is meant for cultivation of spiritual knowledge in eternal relationship with the supreme personality of godhead and the executive heads of all states and all planets are obligated obliged to 
impart this lesson to the citizens by education, culture, and devotion. In other words, the executive heads of all states are intended to spread the science of Krishna consciousness so that the people may take advantage of this great science and pursue a successful path utilizing the opportunity of the human form of life. In this millennium, the sun god is known as Vivaspan, the king of sun, which is the origin of all planets within the solar system. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated, Yachakshur Esa Savita Sakala Grahanam Raja Sam Raja Samasta Sura Murtir Asesha Teja Yash Yagnaya Brahmati Sambrata Kala Chakro Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bhajami. Let me worship Lord Brahma said the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, Krishna, who is the Supreme, who is the original person and under whose order the sun, which is the king of all planets, is assuming immense power and heat. The sun represents the eye of the Lord and traverses its orbit in obedience of his order. The sun The sun is the king of the planets and the sun god at present of the name Vyashwan rules the sun planet, which is controlling all our planets by supplying heat and light. He is rotating under the order of Krishna and Lord Krishna originally made Vyashwan his first disciple to understand the science of Bhagavad Gita. The Gita is not therefore a speculative transit, uh, treatise for the insignificant mundane solar, mundane scholar, but is a standard book of knowledge coming down from time immemorial. In the Mahabharata, Shanti Parvo, we can trace out the history of the Gita as follows. Treta, Treta Yugadao Chatato, Vivasvan Manave Dadao. Manuscha loka bhriti artham Shuta yekshva kave dadau Ikshvakuna cha kahito Vyapiya lokan avasthita In the beginning of all millennium known as Treta Yug, this science of the relationship with the Supreme was delivered by Vivashvan to Manu. Manu, being the father of mankind, gave it to his son Maharaj Ikshvaku, the king of this earth, planet, and uh, forefather of the Raghu dynasty, in which Lord Ramachandra appeared. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita existed in human society from the time of Maharaj Ikshvaku. At present moment, we have just passed through 5,000 years of Kali Yuga, which lasts 432,000 years. Before this, there was Dwapar Yuga, 800,000 years. And before that, there was Treta Yuga, 1.2 million years. Thus, some 2,500,000 years ago, Manu spoke the Bhagavad Gita to his disciple and son Maharaj Ichabaku the king of this planet, Earth. The age of the current Manu is calculated to last some 3 million, oh, 305 million, 300,000 years, of which 120 million, 400,000 years have passed, accepting that therefore the birth of Manu, the Gita was spoken by the Lord to his disciple, the sun god Vivashvan, a rough estimate is that the Gita was spoken at least 120 million 400,000 years ago. And in human society, it has been extend, extend for 2 million years. It was respoken by the Lord again to Arjun about 5,000 years ago. 
that is the rough estimate of the history of gita according to the gita itself and according to the version of the speaker lord sri krishna it was spoken to the sun god bhivashvan because he is also a kshatriya and is the father of all kshatriyas who are descendants of the sun god or the shurya vamsha kshatriyas because bhagavad gita is as good as the vedas being spoken by the being spoken by the supreme uh, personality of godhead this knowledge is apurusha apurusha superhuman since the vedic instructions are accepted as they are without human interpretation the gita must therefore be accepted without mundane interpretation the mundane wranglers may speculate on the gita in their own ways but that is not bhagavad gita as it is therefore bhagavad gita has to be accepted as it is from the disciplic succession and it is described here in that the lord spoke to the sun god the sun god spoke to his son manu and manu spoke to his son ikshvaku jai shila prabhupad jai shila prabhupad so very important verse here the first verse of the fourth chapter as prabhu said it's the history of the bhagavad gita so krishna spoke this knowledge to bhagavad gita not just 5000 years ago but that was the most recent time when he spoke it 5000 years ago but krishna had spoken it many millions of years ago and he spoken it to the sun god vivishwan and then vivishwan gave it to his son manu and manu gave it to ikshvaku so in this way the knowledge came down to the earthly kingdom earthly planet so we see the history of the bhagavad gita that it, it, it's it's eternal knowledge it's been here for so many years and lord krishna is describing in this verse he's describing the the disciplic succession the passing the knowledge on and how he gave it to the sun god vivishwan and then vivishwan gave it to the father of mankind manu so this knowledge is meant for the heads the leaders of the society they're meant to take this knowledge and they're meant to educate all of their citizens the people under them with this knowledge it's meant for everyone so that lord krishna gave it to these important people the heads of the society just like he said the, the sun god you know there there are two lines of kshatriya kings one line is from the moon and the one line is from the sun lord krishna he appears in the dynasty coming from the moon and it said when lord krishna was born although it was the eighth day to ask to me the moon was full because lord krishna was appearing in his line in the line of the kings coming from the moon but here this is describing million, millions of years ago the knowledge was given to the sun god vivishwan lord rama he he's born in the dynasty coming from the sun god so sometimes the lord comes in the the, the different lines sometimes from the sun sometimes from the moon there are these two lines of the kshatriya kings so the sun god the sun the king of all planets right the, the sun is like the eye of the the universe without the sun we cannot see anything we cannot see anything without the sun so the sun is the eye for all of us so it has such an important position so the king of the sun god vivishwan is a very important person in the universe and lord krishna gave him the knowledge of the yoga and instructed him and then he passed it on to manu the father of mankind so this is how the knowledge was delivered to in the line of the disciplic succession 
you can see this knowledge is not just simply India and it's coming from another universe and from another planet, from the sun god. So it's for the whole universe. Any questions? Sometimes people think, oh, the Bhagavad Gita is just a book written by a man. No, the Bhagavad Gita is described aparusheya. It's apurusha. Purusha means the person, apurusha. It's coming from someone who's not a person. It's divine knowledge, eternal spiritual knowledge. It's not coming from any imperfect person. So Bhagavad Gita is perfect information. There's nothing, there's no fault can be found in the Bhagavad Gita. Other knowledge, you see science and so on, they always change it, the history, their different opinions, different ideas. They come up with theories and another theory, another theory, a new idea. But Bhagavad Gita, this is eternal. It's perfect knowledge, perfect information given to us. We just simply have to make use of it properly. Guru Maharaj, I have heard people telling because it was written 5,000 years ago, uh, now it's in Kali Yuga, sometimes some things are not applicable from Bhagavad Gita because now the time has changed and uh, people have changed. Well, that's their illusion. People have not changed. Everywhere there is birth, old age, disease and death. How have people changed? The same problems are there. The problem of birth, old age, disease, and death. These are the problems. These things have not changed. The miseries of life were still there. The same miseries that, that were there thousands of years ago. The same miseries are here today. Miseries inflicted by other living entities, miseries inflicted by our own mind and senses, and miseries due to material nature. The same problems are there for everyone, whether 5,000 or 5 billion years ago. It hasn't changed. The same things are there, the same problems. In what way have we changed? Show me what would be changed. Or we become lazier, we become more animalistic, we become dirtier, we become more sinful. Yes, but we haven't really changed. The same problems are there. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Does everyone agree? Nobody disagree. Everyone accept? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Problems are there. No arguments, huh? No. <laughs> All right. So then we will chant Hare Krishna now. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण 